All right, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, May 22nd, 2024, about 10.27 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 3.8 earthquake here around the Mediterranean area. That is the latest earthquake there on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out space weather activity here first as uh, we check out the data here from solarham.com com is a site they've just recently up upgraded to the dot uh, com domain from the dot net we are seeing a little bit of flaring activity coming from a uh well soon to be far side sunspot here on the southwestern area of the sun uh notice a couple regions here getting uh, quite complex looks like that's going to stir up here as it scoots further off onto the western limb a little bit of sea flare activity stirring up right now but we did see uh, some M flare activity looks like um, a couple different M's here, very low grade. Looks like an M 4.2 and an M 1.7 or so. Uh, but uh, for the most part, these areas that are shooting off those uh, low grade M flares are going to be again scooting off well off into the western limb here soon, out of sight, out of mind. But look at that, getting quite dynamic. We've seen that this morning. Uh, it's looking quite dynamic here and continues to grow and evolve, but that will be off on the far side soon. We're left with a mess of a sunspot here. Really not a whole lot of hope for it. Everything looks like it's disorganized and fairly stable in terms of complexity. Uh, the magnetic uh, structure out here does not look promising for any type of flaring. Now there is uh, some active regions out here on the far side of the sun. Let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, 3663 uh, is on the far side, just about ready to crest here across the eastern limb. So we should have a decent view of this probably by tomorrow morning. At least uh, maybe a little bit of a view on the eastern limb. We'll be able to see it. Uh, it is a old former sunspot, 3663. It will be renamed once it gets here on the earth-facing side of the sun. And uh, there's 3664. Look at that. A, a fairly giant sunspot still. And that has the uh, cold, the potential here to visit the far or the uh, Earth-facing side of the sun here soon. I was going to say this is the culprit of the recent aurora activity. Many X flares and many subsequent CMEs were produced from 3664, bringing us a uh, show of a lifetime here recently. That will be uh, here in a week or so far as the eastern limb goes we'll get a, a little view of it but right now i'm kind of curious i want to see what this one looks like it does look fairly large um but it, we obviously can't tell the magnetic uh, structure on this image until it gets further into the earth facing side of the sun which we'll continue to watch uh, overall threat right now, not a super big deal. 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 60, X flare around 10% chance or so. Uh, proton event somewhat elevated as well. It looks like mainly because of the uh, uh, amplification there of a couple different sunspots. Uh, let's see here. No major roars in the forecast here for now. Just maybe some unsettled conditions here, but really not a whole lot in terms of auroras for now. All right, earthquake activity out here. See what we got. Anything uh, kicking off there in Southern California? Fairly quiet. Uh, obviously, there's some earthquake activity, but no major swarms. If you look at the 2.5 map and above, well, that would make California almost uh, absent of any earthquakes, except for up here around Mammoth Lakes and the Mariposa area. Handful of uh, twos, it looks like, 2.5 and a 2.6. Aside from that, very small microquake activity out here in the last 24 hours. A couple earthquakes up here around Lake Albanor as well, 2.0 and a 1.7. Uh, let's check out the Cascadia subduction zone trimmer. Let's see what we got. 209 epicenters of trimmer here down in Northern California, the extreme Southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, still really haven't seen any impressive events here since the end of October. Uh, in 2022, that uh, was sometime in October 2022, is when we've seen our last decent uh, uptick of elevated trimmer. But since then, it's just been a little bit here and there, but nothing quite like what we had seen in the past for now. Uh, Hawaii, 
Let's see what we got out here in the uh, Pacific. Looks like a 3.4 underneath the Pahali area. Really, um, this, this region here should be kicking up again in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, we were watching the uh, inflation chart rise a little bit here across the Kilauea volcano. And it's just a, uh, it's a waiting game here with the activity. Let's see deformation data. We'll check out the charts here real quick. And yeah, see we're still steadily rising here. And that's, you know, pretty decent recovery from the couple days there of stationary or deflationary tilt. So we've come back up as expected. That's the overall trend. This should peak up a little bit higher here. And it's during these peak periods that we have to watch here for uh, potential magma displacement there from the summit or some type of magma intrusion area off to the east rift zone. Maybe even the southwest rift zone area. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, either way, again, like I mentioned, it's kind of a waiting game. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity right now, but we are getting that inflation going on there across the volcano. Kind of made a zigzag pattern here from California down to Hawaii. Left out the uh, the rest of the states up here. Yellowstone National Park, a handful of smaller quakes here near the Hebgen Lake Estates from earlier this morning. Doesn't look like there's any major earthquake swarm going on there at Yellowstone. This is uh, the activity this morning here. Very small microquakes. And it looks like we've had a couple more in the last few hours or so. But really, that is not anything to uh, write home about. Looks pretty quiet up there. Uh, let's see here. Oklahoma, Texas. Appalachian Mountains here. 2.7. Not a whole lot going on through the rest of the country out here. As uh, far as down south, it looks a little absent of earthquake movement, but uh, there's you know there's a 3.7 coming in right now, South America area on the Peru Chile Trench. Handful of quakes up and down the area today, and uh, you know similar to any major subduction zones that see a lot of stress, the um, uh, this activity is very common. Always seeing twos and threes and and um, down here in South America as well. It's a, it's a very dynamic area in terms of stress accumulation. You got the Nazca plate here moving to the east with the South America plate moving to the uh, north northwest, it looks like. But this is a subduction zone here, pushing that Nazca plate underneath the South America area. Uh, Middle America Trench, you got the Cocos plate here in a different color blue. That is interacting and subducting underneath the uh, Caribbean plate here. So it's a huge mess of... Uh, uh, plate dynamics and uh, they see a lot of earthquake activity out there and some big ones obviously on occasion uh, looks like we got some movement in the south sandwich trench area another subduction zone area 4.6 fairly recent quake that one looks actually kind of deep down there let's see what we got about 175 kilometers deep that's a fairly deep earthquake way down south here the atlantic ocean looks fairly quiet uh, let's check out the Iceland activity real quick, see what we got there for any elevated earthquake movement. Still seeing some movement out here last 24 hours. I, I like to check out the last 12. I don't want to keep it too cluttered. That way we can see if there's been any uptick here recently, and there's really not a lot. Uh, if we bring up the extremely small earthquakes as well, it does look like there's, you know, still continued earthquake, very small earthquake activity in the negative range out here around the Grindavik area northward. So this area is quite dynamic. It's swelling. It's swollen in terms of inflation and uh, just a matter of time here before we see things uh, really kick up. Uh, I meant to click on this right here. The latest from the Icelandic Met Office was put out yesterday. Still, some wording out there, right? Probability of a new magma flow and another eruption in the coming days. We're at a increased level of, of inflation, and boy, does it show. We're sitting at about 17 million cubic meters of magma into the area of the Savart Singhi region, the reservoir, and uh, things are get, close to getting uh, busy out here, I feel, in terms of eruption activity. All right, uh, what else we got here across the area? New Zealand, still seeing some movement down there, I think. Uh, a little bit of clustering going on in the New Zealand area underneath North Island area, it looks like. Haven't really seen anything new 
this evening. Most of this is from earlier this morning. Newer earthquake activity, obviously in the White Rings, showing up pretty good over here around Papua New Guinea. And uh, some big time cluttering going on here around the Philippines southward. Uh, looks like Australia has seen a 3.9. All that activity over here, I believe, is putting the strain inland here against the Australia region. Uh, it kind of makes sense here because the deeper activity, well, not only can you see the strain upstream build, but also at the same time that pressure momentum can go in the general area where the arrows are pointing, and that would be kind of over in this region. But, uh, yeah, 3.9, I mean, that's a, a decent earthquake sure it was felt by a few folks out there uh, su again super big clustering going out on out in the um, Maluka Sea region or the Banda Sea area Maluka Sea as well 5.4 the l well that's from last night that's the largest though in the cluster the latest one to 4.3 down here around the Banda Sea Japan fairly quiet up here for now not a whole lot going on across the Kuroka Machaka and uh, as far as the Mediterranean goes as you can see some twos and threes uh, latest activity on the Campi Flegre area uh, of Italy, that uh, volcano down there. Let's see what we got as far as earthquake activity goes. Really, um, when was this one? 3.6 earlier this morning, it looks like. For now, it looks like that big time earthquake swarm is kind of a. Uh, uh, mellowed out here slightly. But uh, we'll continue to watch it and see how things uh, progress in that area. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's about it in terms of major earthquake. Well, there's not really even a lot of major earthquake activity. Alaska still seeing some movement up here, but that's very typical across the area of a major subduction zone. Um... What, are we, what have we had here in the last 30 days? Let's look at this, see if we can't find any quiet zones that may be lacking activity. Um, majority of these quakes here in this area of the uh, subduction zone, the Perchilli Trench, are super deep. There, there, I don't see any surface adjustment going on here of sizable activity. This is 4.5 and above, so... A lot of times we'll see deeper movement quakes there, followed up by some surface adjustment. But this area right here looks like it may be uh, wanting to produce some type of larger activity. There's been a lot of swarming here into that subduction zone, so keep an eye on that area. California, you know, pretty quiet in terms of anything major. Uh, looking at the last 30 days across this area... Kuro Kamachaka, pretty quiet. I mean, there's just, there's always earthquake activity out here, right? And it's hard to, you know, exactly pinpoint where we may see some further large scale movement. We look at swarms, we look at the deep activity, we look at the lack of activity in a certain area. And, um, you know, right now it's, it's all over the place. So it's really hard to tell exactly where one may see, you know, any decent activity out here. This is called, uh, what is this, a significant worldwide? Of course, these are smaller quakes there in California. But in the last 30 days, what do we got? Um, 6.5, 6.1, 6 6.4. That's really not that impressive here in the last 30 days. But, uh, you know, this stuff comes and goes. Earthquake activity um, can be at minor levels for a little while, and then it will ramp up. It's just all over the place right now. A lot of earthquake activity, but really no huge quake movement. All right, uh, what do we got here for the uh, Storm Prediction Center? Current overnight outlook shows some thunderstorm activity out here across a good portion of the country. And uh, there's still some tornado threat overnight, wind and hail threats as well. As we look at the day for Thursday, uh, well... The severe weather potential really returns up here around the same regions that just got hit recently. Uh, Nebraska, a little area in northern Kansas. and uh, Technically, though, this whole area is going to be under the gun in terms of the severe weather uh, potential coming up tomorrow. 
Uh, pretty large area for tornado activity. Main threat looks like it's going to be some large damaging hail and some wind. But uh, don't ignore this tornado activity. It seems to be the year of the tornadoes. 2024 has been quite uh, an impressive tornado year so far. And we're not over. Um, these guys just can't get a break out here. It's continuing for quite a while, it looks like. Um, and then day three, as far as Friday goes, right now just some marginal risk out here across uh, a good portion of the Midwest area. But aside from that, we'll continue to keep an eye on things here. And I think that's about it. Um, no major movement out in the ocean, right? No doom or gloom here. Obviously, if something were to kick up out here, uh, we would know about it. Not only from a visual perspective, but uh, all these stations would light up. And everything looks pretty quiet out now. Uh, sometimes these buoys get sent into uh, some type of defunctional fault mode. And they sit like that for days until someone can uh, get to them. But nothing kicking up out there for now. Looks pretty quiet. All right. I'm out of here. Have yourself a good day. Seismograph stations here look pretty quiet. Uh, one little spike of an earthquake there on the Chile station. But aside from that, it's, uh, it's a beautiful Wednesday evening. Have yourself a good one. And we'll catch you guys back out here for the Thursday morning update. Take care.